Alrighty guys, now we're gonna kind of step it up a notch. So for this game, we have a folder in our sprites called player hurt. And what this is, is a damage system. So like for instance, say we have three lives. Every time the player gets hit, we're gonna go ahead and instantiate one of these on the wings. So it looks like our, we have an engine failure. And if you get hit again, then the other side will also have an engine failure, signifying that if you get hit one more time, uh, it's over for you. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we need to attach these to the player and animate them. And then through logic, when we get damaged, we need to turn them on. So we're gonna have a left engine and a right engine. So to start, let's go ahead and drag our player into the scene so that we can modify it. Grab your player prefab, drag them in, select your canvas, title, let's disable the image for now. Head back over to your player and go ahead and just drag the first frame of the fire onto the player. So here we have the fireball and it's a little big here so we're going to go ahead and resize that. Also set the foreground layer and let's see here. We may want the fireball to be, go ahead and name it uh, left engine by the way. We may want this to be, I don't know if we want this on top or below. Let's see how it looks. Okay, I think we want it on top of the player for sure. So go ahead and set the order and layer to one. Actually, you know what? That's actually pretty good. It doesn't have to be on top, but it has to be to where we can actually see it. Um, I think eh, it might actually be better if it's on top. Now we just need to shrink it down. So go ahead and set the scale to like one. That's a little bit better. Let's drag that up. Yeah, okay, I like that. I think that's gonna be really, really cool. So here we go, and let's go ahead and set it back to one, see how it looks. Okay, yeah, we'll keep it at uh, we'll keep it at two for the order and layer. It may conflict with our shield if we turn the shield on. Oh, and actually, no, it doesn't. That looks pretty. Yeah, I like that. Looks pretty good. Alrighty. So what I want to do now is here's our left engine. Duplicate it by hitting Control D on PC or Command D on Mac. Call it right engine. And then let's go ahead and attach it to the right side. So what we're gonna do is when we get hit. We're gonna basically, we can randomize it or we can determine you know, if it's the left or right, but it, it really, let's, let's make it interesting. Let's randomize it. So basically what will happen is both of these will be off and we're gonna randomly enable one of them when you get hit. And then if that one's on, we'll go ahead and turn the other one on. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and animate these now. So in order to animate these, because they're gonna share the same animation, we really only have to do it once. So we're gonna click on the left engine, go to the animation, and let's call this engine failure. Make sure you put it in the animations folder and call it engine failure. Okay, and all we have to do now is select all the frames, zero through 60, drag it into the animation view. We'll see our keyframes and let's go ahead and demo it out. So it looks really rapid here which actually isn't so bad. It might be designed for 60 frames per second, seeing as there is 60 frames, but let's go ahead and slow it down to 30 frames. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it at 60, I like that. So again, you can change the sample rate to have, to have it be whatever you'd like. So now our left engine has the animator component with the left engine controller, and we can just do the same thing with our right engine. So for our right engine here, let's go ahead and we can actually copy this animator component and paste it, we can paste it onto the right engine. So right click your transform, paste component as new, and instead of left engine, we'll duplicate that and we'll call it right engine. And let's just drag that in, right engine. Okay, and it has the engine failure. Okay, all we have to do now is disable it. Okay. Good. And now we have to actually create game logic for when to enable it. So to keep it simple, uh, I am going to just enable the left one followed by the right one. But as a challenge for you, um, I highly recommend you give yourself the challenge and randomize it. So let's go ahead and open up our damage function, which is inside our player. In order to enable those two items, we need to first know about them, just like the same way we enable the shield. So here, we're gonna have an array of type image. And actually, you know what, that can be game object. That's fine. 
So here, private game object array, and then we're gonna call them, um, we'll call them engines. How about that? So underscore engines. And so we can see it in the inspector. We'll serialize the array. All right, so private game object engines. Let's go ahead and drag those two game objects into our engines. Make sure you apply this as a, uh, apply the prefab so that your changes are made to the object we're actually spawning into the game. On your player, we should now have a field to accept some engines, which we do as an array, drop that down. We have two engines, our left engine and our right engine. Whoops. Okay, save this, make sure you hit apply. Head back into our script, and now we wanna turn on these engines. When do we turn them on? Well, we turn them on when we when we get damaged, right? But how do I know which one to turn on? How do I know if I should turn on the left or the right? What if I turn the left one on first? How do I know I turn the right one on? That means we have to keep track of how many times we've been hit. So what we can do for this is we can create some sort of hit counter. That's a private variable that we keep track of. So we can call that private int hit count. And we'll set it to zero by default equals zero. And in void start, which will get called every time we spawn this in, we want to make sure we reset that to zero. So hit count will equal zero. And what's going to happen now is every time we damage the player, we need to modify the hit count. So here we, mod we get damaged. So we're going to say hit count plus plus. And what we're going to do now is we need to check. So here, we can say if hit count equals one, we'll say turn left engine on. Um, let's say, yeah, turn left engine, sorry, failure on. And we can check for else if hit count is equal to two, then we want to turn right engine failure on. Okay, and to do that, we simply access the array, which is done through engines. And then we can say zero dot set active, and we say true. And we do the same thing for this one. Set active. And number one, all right, so element one, which is our second element, we set active and set that to true. Now, this should also give you sort of an idea of what if you were damaged you could create in the future a health power up that would heal you and it would reduce your hit count. And that way, when you get hit again, it would re enable the proper engine failure. All right, so this should really be all we had to do. If we go ahead and save this, test it out. Again, make sure you apply your prefab so that the changes get made to the project view model. Go ahead and remove it from your scene, add our title image back, save your scene. Let's go ahead and run the game. And we should have some engine failures every time we get hit now. So let's give it a go. Okay. So we lost a life and no engine failure. Not 100% sure why. Let's check it out. If we click on the player, we have the left engine, the right engine. And, oh, whoops, sorry guys. I think I accidentally turned the sprite renderers off. We want to make sure we keep those on. So let's drag our player back in and make sure it's sprite render is on for the left engine and right engines. There we go. Alrighty, we'll go ahead and save this. We'll turn off the game objects by default. Hit apply on the player, remove it from the scene, run the game. And we should have some proper engine failures going on now. Let's see. Okay, so we'll get our shield here. Oh, we're also gonna to need to factor in what happens when we get hit with our shield. So here, my I had a shield and yet I still got an engine failure. Although it is working and man, is that cool. All right, so let's go ahead and fix that. We only wanna actually increase our hit count if we don't have a shield. So we're gonna take all of this logic here and if shields active is true, we can just put it right here. Because we return if the shields is active. If the shield isn't active, then we increase the hit count and then we do all that logic. 
So let's go ahead and save it one more time, run our game, and we should have a functioning uh, engine failure. There we go. And there you go, we got hit once. We have an engine failure, and twice, and three times we're out. Very cool. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next video.